Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John and I are with our favorite brain guy, Steve Campbell. Hello. Steve, great to see you. Good to see um, you. I, I don't know if, if you watch the news uh, very often as I do, but I, no matter what channel I watch, and I guess this is true, has always been true of the news. You know, they used to say, uh, 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 if a man, if a dog bites a man, that's not news. If a man bites a dog, that's news. That's it's always got to be spectacular. Yeah. But that's it's how they make their money. It's yeah. negative. Yeah. I mean, you, nobody reports the good news. They've talked yeah. about that for years. It's always yeah. negative. How yeah. do you stay optimistic in such a negative environment? Okay, well, let's look at the characteristics of two different types of people, pessimists and optimists, okay? And let's talk about how pessimists react when things are really, 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 really hard. It's easy to be optimistic when things are great, but what about when it's really hard? Bankruptcy, death in a family, COVID, etc. So how do pessimists react when things are really hard? Number one, they eternalize it. They say it will always be hard. Number two, oh, what's this? What's this thing? Well, that's the main one. They turn like they say it will always be hard. Um, they globalize it. They say everything is hard, and finally they say it's all my fault. Here's how optimists look at hard stuff, and I'll share with you a story that illustrates how it works. The first thing they do, and this is the work of Dr. E.P. Seligman out of the University of Pennsylvania, who wrote, who has a wonderful website on positive psychology. So if you want to look it up, you can. Optimists, when dealing with really, really, really hard stuff, the first thing they do is they isolate it. So let me give you an illustration. Many years ago, when I was teaching, I got a call from my wife when I was leaving the campus, and she was, she had just walked out of the doctor's office. And I picked up the phone and she wasn't talking. And you get Mary near a phone and she talks. And this is different. She wasn't talking. Finally, I had to say, hi, what's going on? And she said, I just walked out of the doctor's office. I have cancer. And so our daughters all came home, their husbands, and we all gathered home to plan this new part in our life. Mary would have to have surgery, radiation, chemo, all the things that are involved with it. And we said, how are we gonna deal with this? The first thing we did is we isolated it. So here's what we did. We said, here's the cancer with the, the chemo and the corrective surgery and losing your hair and all the other things, but it's not the only thing in our lives. There are other things in our life that are just as real as cancer such as we live in Sonoma County, such as we've been married for 40 years, such as our daughters are married to men who love them even more than we do. So what we decided was to say, here's the cancer with all the stuff that goes with it, but it's not the only thing in our life. And then we made a decision. We are not going to let the cancer be an umbrella over everything else. Was it an easy decision? No, but as time moved on, it became easier and easier. Why? Because our brain believes everything we tell it. And the more we said it, the more real it became until eventually the brain rewired itself and it became a part of our mindset. And we got through the cancer. Number two, what optimists do is they temporalize it, which means they say, Life constantly changes. I can guarantee you that tomorrow is going to be very different from today. That's a guarantee. I have no idea what tomorrow holds, but it's going to be very different from today. Life is constantly changing. So what we said is we are going to lock on to Mary being cancer free in one year because that's what the doctors told us. Let's lock on to that. And we did, and it became true. Number three, what, I, what optimists do is they say, 
I can always change the way I think. I decide. I choose how I'm going to see this cancer. When Mary first got cancer, she blamed herself. She said, see, I, lost, I gained this weight. I wasn't exercising. And she got very down on herself. And we talked a lot about this an awful lot. And we all both decided after a few days, there's no one to blame. Stuff happens, hard stuff happens. And what we do now is we say, okay, how are we gonna get through this? A year later, she was cancer free. And the year after that, the year after that, the year after that, and then she called me in the same way, but this time it was different. This time when I picked up the phone, she said, hi. Hi, what's going on? I just walked out of the doctor's office. They found something. <gasps> How are you doing? You know what, Steve? I'm doing all right. How? I made it through last time. I can make it through this time. What changed? Not the cancer. It's what Mary said about the cancer. That's what optimists do. They say it isn't COVID. It isn't how I was raised. It isn't what I look like that determines how I feel myself, feel about myself. It's what I say about how I was raised and what I say about COVID and what I say about what I look like that determines how I feel. I'm in control. So I guess one of the best messages I could give your listeners is simply this. What you are feeling isn't coming from COVID. It's coming from what you're saying about COVID. What you are feeling about yourself is not coming from how you were raised is coming from what you were saying about how you were raised. And why is that so exciting? Because you can replace what you're saying. Notice I don't see change. I never use the word change when I'm talking about the brain. Why? Because the brain hates change. The brain doesn't want you to change. The brain wants to keep you right where you're at. So what I do, is I take advantage of the fact that the brain may hate change, but it loves to create new things. So you create new messages that you give yourself about your situation, about who you are, about the successes you've had in your life, the failures you've had in your life, and the brain says, okay. You lock onto being optimistic. It starts up there and it becomes a part of the way you think. You're in charge. I remember when my wife was an elementary school principal and we were talking one evening, we were talking about the day and she said, I gotta tell you what happened today. I woke up this morning, I was already in my office studying and she said, I remembered I was gonna deal with this horrible parent. And I said to myself while I was still lying in bed, I am gonna have a horrible day. She's been coming to my seminars for years and she realized that when she said that, what was her brain gonna say? Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. And now my job, this is her brain talking, is to find ways to make your day horrible. And when she realized that, she said, I jumped out of bed and in my knockout, I stood next to the bed and I talked to my brain. I said, okay, brain, listen up. And the eyes got really, really big of her brain. And she said, I'm in charge. And we are going to have a great day. And Steve, we did. The parent never showed up. And I had one of the best days I've had all year. And then she said to me, this message is so very powerful because it puts the control back to us where it belongs. Wow, that's how you learn to be 
optimistic. Hmm. Wow, important message. That's important an important message. message. Really important message. You know, um, being pessimistic doesn't feel good. No. It's not fun. No. And yet, every once in a while, I've met somebody who is a negative, just a negative person. Yes, and they you, just are. After a while, you mm. look at them and you say, they must like it. You don't they want to enjoy oh, yeah. it because they're it's, always doing it. It's what I call the comfort zone. The mm. comfort zone is what you're comfortable with. It doesn't mean it's comfortable, right? But it's what they're used to, what yeah. what they've doing all their lives, and and yeah. they just get stuck in it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, great, great advice. Thank great you. Great insights. And Thank for, you so, so much. for all of you negative nabobs, uh, <laughs> and most most of our audience will remember where that phrase came from. If not, we'll do that on. A, a John and Art vlog when was just two of us messing around. But for all of you negative right. nabobs out there, there's cause to be optimistic. Okay, uh, watch this video again, and you'll know why. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.